Hi folks, Brian Pate back with you again for another week of my prognostication professionalism. Okay, we're just going to make some picks. First weekend of NAC6 conference football. Uh, it's going to be an interesting week. We know that Heritage and Wake Forest are likely going to be the top two teams in the conference. How will the rest of it shake out? What will Corinth Holders do in their first year of 4A ball? What will Nightdale's reaction to coming into the conference be? How strong will Rolls will be? What will Wakefield end up doing? They've had a tough start to the season. Now, every week, we're going to give you the conference standings right here over my shoulder. We're going to give you the wins, the losses, both out of conference and in conference, as well as the max preps ranking, so you can figure out where your favorite team's going to finish and what their chances are to make the playoffs. We're going to get right to it. Our first game this week is the Wake Forest Cougars, and they are going to be hosting the Nightdale Knights at Trentini Stadium. Now, Wake Forest fans may be a little upset this week because for the first time this year, Wake Forest dropped out of the number one spot. That's right, without losing a game, Wake Forest dropped to the number two position in the state as Mallard Creek jumped them to take the number one ranking in the state. So Wake Forest is going to be out for a little blood here. Now, Nightdale's got a freshman running back named Lewis Richardson, pretty good little ball player. He's got 760 yards and nine TDs in six games. And they've also got a tight end that's really good, and he's being heavily recruited by FSU. So you can expect to see a little bit of activity there. Still don't think Nightdale is quite ready for Wake Forest, though. I'm picking the Cougars to win this one big. Our next game this week is going to be the Heritage Huskies going on the road down to the Clayton area and visiting the Corinth Holders Pirates. Huskies come into this one unbeaten, and Corinth Holders is 2-3 and three on the season. Last game out, Heritage laid it on Holly Springs, 52-7, and Corinth Holders didn't quite uh, eke one out against the Cleveland Rams. It's really important for the Huskies this week to not slip up in their first round of conference play. Lots of big games coming up, and they better be careful, because if they're looking forward, they can slip up here and get surprised by Corinth Holders. This is the first time that Corinth Holders will have played in the 4A conference, and it's going to be a big question mark for them. There are a lot of folks picking them to finish at the very bottom of the conference. Some folks questioning if they even get a win. If Heritage goes in thinking that way, they'll be right for an upset. They better be careful. The Huskies, of course, come into this game with the number one rusher in the state of North Carolina. Ricky Persons got 1,228 rushing yards right now, as well as 22 touchdowns, and that leads all of North Carolina. This, all UNC State fans are going to love this kid because he's going to be in the backfield in red and white next year over Carter Finley. You also have uh, Gunnar Holmberg, who is a Duke recruit. He's going to—he's very popular, great ball player. He is—he threw a pass a couple of weeks ago that was a, a corner route in the end zone that could have dropped into a trash can. I'm picking the Huskies to win here. I think that, that they may be a little, a little bit looking forward to the next couple of weeks, so I'm not picking them big, but the Huskies should still control this game soundly. So we're picking Heritage to win this one. Last game of the week, folks, this week is Rollsville going on the road over to North Raleigh to visit the Wakefield Wolverines in Wolverine Stadium. 7 p.m. Friday night is the spot. Rollsville comes into this game at 2-4. and four. They've had their opportunities. They missed a really good chance to beat Garner a couple of weeks ago to let that opportunity kind of slide by them. Wakefield, on the other hand, has had a tough time getting out to an 0-6 start. Far as I can remember, that's the first time that's ever happened to the Wolverines. So they're ready to chomp it at the bit to get on it. Now, Rollsville's got seven players over 280 pounds and three over 300. So these are some good big guys. It's going to be very important for those offensive and defensive lines to get the push, especially against the Wakefield uh, quarterback. But they can make a playoff run. With, with merely three games won in conference, Rollsville could still make the playoffs and make a good showing. Wakefield, unfortunately, had a 20 to nothing lead against Middle Creek two weeks ago, had an opportunity to put the game away, and just did not. Middle Creek came back and scored 28 unanswered points and, and won that ball game. The Wakefield quarterback is for real. His name is Trexler Ivy, and he, con he continues to improve. It's a name you're probably going to hear next year and the year after as he goes into his junior and senior years. But I think Wakefield's a little overmatched this, this week. I'm going to be picking the Rams to walk away with their first next six conference win. Thanks for joining us this week. Don't forget to go out to your ball games. The ball games start at 7 p.m. on Friday night this week. Go out and support your local high school, high school athletics. And as always, if you know anybody that's thinking about buying a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate, have them give me a call. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.